Welcome to another episode of Fundamentals with Mike Glover. That would be me. I am holding a carbine. I know some of you guys and gals are probably like, uh, I hold a gun the right way, but do you really? Uh, I'm going to optimize your grip today and we're going to teach you how to hold a carbine the proper way. So here we go. All right, guys, so the first thing, before I can teach you how to hold it with your hands, I have to teach you how to align it with your body. So we're talking about alignment here. The first thing we're going to do is stand facing the target, shoulder width apart, no aggress aggressive movements in your posture and your body position, literally standing erect looking at the target. The next thing we're going to do is take a step back with our dominant leg. This allows us to open up our gait, but also align the barrel on target, and it's a little bit more ergonomic. What we don't want to do is put unnatural inputs into this gun. The next thing I'm gonna do is flex forward with my non-dominant knee, which allows me to flex and transition my body, my physical body, from target to target moving laterally. This also allows me a, a solid setup in the platform for holding the gun the proper way. Okay, so the first thing we need to understand about holding this carbine the proper way is you need to understand that this is not a deer rifle. This is not your grandfather's deer rifle. A rifle recoils aggressively because it doesn't have a cycle of operation and a mechanism to reduce the recoil. Unlike uh, a deer rifle, this AR-15 has a bolt carrier group and bolt that reciprocates back into this mil-spec tube in this case, which has a buffer and buffer spring assembly. What happens is this BCG literally goes in the back of this, which doesn't have any recoil. In fact, I would venture to say that there's negative recoil on this gun. You will see muzzle flip, but recoil is rearward movement. All right, this is a hunting rifle, completely different. Imagine I shouldered this, you know what's gonna happen? That hurt. Obviously, I don't need to explain why you would hold it that way. You saw for yourself. All right, guys, so the question is, where do I put the buttstock on my shoulder? Well, here's what I like to see. Left knee forward or non-dominant knee forward, dominant foot back, it aligns the barrel properly, and now I drive the optic up to the eye. What I don't want you to see is driving it here and then looking or searching for the optic. Unnecessary physical movements input onto the gun are going to affect speed and accuracy so let's not do that so bringing it up and you can see right now it's just sitting in the pocket just with friction but that's all we need all right guys the next thing we're going to talk about is dominant hand on the pistol grip and what i mean is if you over grip anything and you try to move your trigger finger you're going to impede the ability for it to move but if you relax your grip and you apply a light grip to something, you're gonna be able to manipulate your trigger finger easily. And one of the principles of winning a gunfight is speed and accuracy. Well, if I wanna be fast, I can't over grip the rear of the gun. All right, guys, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the non-dominant hand on the foregrip of the gun. I like a tactic or technique called the C-clamp. Now, a lot of people have talked about the C-clamp in different ways, like, hey, it's not relevant, you shouldn't do that, just because special operations do C-clamps, it's not the best tactic. I could probably argue or debate with those guys and debunk all those myths. Uh, what I want to do is talk about the C-clamp and exactly why you should do it. All right, reason number one. When I hold this, you're going to get muzzle flip on the front end of this gun, the business end of this gun. What that means is you're going to see the gun come up and remember, we already assessed that it doesn't have a lot of recoil. In fact, it might be negative recoil, but on the front end of this gun, it's going to pop and flip. If you don't have a barrier to impede that movement, then it's still going to go up. I see people holding the gun under the foregrip like this and thinking that's a C-clamp. That's not. A C-clamp allows you to create a wall so it can't travel up. That's going to reduce your muzzle flip and allow you to get on target faster. All right, reason number two, alignment. If I take my C-clamp and I roll it forward, I have a thumb and I have a finger. What is magically going to be there every single time is the barrel of the gun. What's important to understand is the way that your mind, eyes, and body work is if you snap your body to alignment, meaning you move your body because of eye-hand coordination, that mechanism, which is naturally instilled in you, is there. 
if you try to overcomplicate the process by thinking I have a 1.75 to 2.5 inch rise on my gun, there's an optic, I'm looking for a red dot in space, you're overcomplicating the process and it's gonna slow you down. So think snapping the gun to target by moving my hands to target. The benefit of this is when you're moving your physical body, you can actually train this on your own. Meaning I see a target, I drive my body. I see a target, I drive my body. That alone, which is visual recognition and acquisition, is going to build good habits for you driving the gun to the target. All right, so I got a blue gun. Here is a good drill to run. I acquire target by looking at a target. I understand that the C-clamp reverse is going to allow me to drive the muzzle to the target. So I simply lift my hands to the target and then I, I acquire it by reconfiguring my sights or optics and understanding that the place that I intend the gun to be is where it should be. I hope that makes sense. What I mean is the red dot needs to be where it's at. If you practice driving the gun with the C-clamp, it might not be where it, you intend it to be. So you reacquire, refix, and that's the new index spot. Then I bring it down, and again, I see, I acquire, I drive the optics to the gun by using my C-clamp, not overthinking the optic, and then I identify another target. I'm looking at the target, now I simply drive the gun to where my target's at. All right, guys, the next thing we're gonna talk about is economy of motion in the support arm elbow. I see a lot of people driving it high, a lot of people driving it low. Just keep it parallel with the ground. This allows you to be efficient in pushing and pulling the business end of the gun. All right, guys, that's it. The fundamental of how to hold an AR-15. A lot of people overcomplicate holding this carbine because they treat it like a rifle. This is not a rifle. It's capable of accuracy out to distance like a rifle, but it has very different characteristics that you can take advantage of if you know how to hold it properly. Remember, this is all about fundamentals. If you like this show and you like uh, this particular series on the Phil Kraus Survival Channel, make sure you hit subscribe and make sure you leave comments. We look at all your feedback and we appreciate everything you guys are doing for us. Until next time, stay alert, stay alive. Guys are all butt hurt and out of shape. Oh, sh this is not sh bit enough. This is not going to be shouldered in my shoulder. Shock is into your sh pistol and sh next thing you need to talk about. Sorry, we're going to talk about is the element of what am I doing? Extra words, it was so smooth. Jesus. <laughs> In an efficient way possible. Shit. That's it, that's how you. Because they. How to hold an AR 15. The. So, until next time, if you. Wait. Oh,